Hi, welcome to Consider the Truth. My name is Scott, and I have Jonathan here from hey, the Haystack channel from YouTube, and he's been on, he, I think you've had your channel for about a, going on a year now, right, Jonathan? Yeah, that's right. How about long have you had your channel? About that? Uh, yeah, little, and yeah, um, so, okay, yeah, so check out his channel after this, and um, we've just been talking a little bit about our backgrounds, and we'd like to try to focus on what we're doing to prepare for these these last days that we're in um talk a little bit about our spiritual preparations our temporal preparations and um let's see how fearful jonathan is going forward and here we go okay so can you see my screen right now yeah Okay, so this is from the the Liahona, June 2018. This is from the first presidency, right when President Nelson became the prophet. And at the very end of this, he says, there's a future of optimism and joy. So I was going to read this real quick, and then we could talk a little bit about what we see in the future, and how we're trying to stay optimistic and free of fear and what we're doing to... Um, to put ourselves in a good spot. So it says, we live in a most vibrant era in the history of the world. I wake up every morning eager for the adventures of the day, and I hope you feel that same exuberance for the gift of life. Though our world is filled with serious challenges, I am optimistic about the future and feel confident about the fundamental goodness of humankind. As the church moves forward, we wish for people everywhere to have the opportunity to hear the positive message of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ because we declare that it has the answers to the most compelling and complicated challenges facing us today. I give you my assurance that regardless of the world's condition and your personal circumstances, you can face the future with optimism and joy if you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his gospel. So the, the prophet's optimistic about where we're at and what we're doing. And um, let me, here we go. I think we, we need to follow his lead. And in the past few videos, I've showed how America will be overthrown. It, the government will collapse. The Gentiles will be destroyed. Um, Elder Christofferson talks about the wrath of God, how this is going to be kind of a, a natural means. It's not necessarily going to be fire from the heavens, but um, just things that we kind of bring upon ourselves. And eventually there's going to be a lot of death and destruction within our nation. President Nelson, he's optimistic. He thinks we should be optimistic too. So I guess tell me a little bit about your optimism for the future. What What, what are you doing to to prepare for this? And and how are you trying to stay optimistic for what's ahead of us? So I think the optimism is uh, best recognized through this past conference. The, the theme I tended to receive was to be confident in your covenants. And mm -hmm. uh, that, that means we're trusting in the Lord and his plan. Because regardless of whether we go through uh, varying difficulty uh, everyone goes through difficulty, some worse than others, but it's where do we stand on that? And how are we raising our children? Because we're, we're wanting to set forward a good future for our children. So they need to have uh, a good, good examples of covenant keeping parents who have poise and can teach mm -hmm. the children who who they can turn to, where they can turn to, to find strength beyond their own. Right. Yeah. And have you felt compelled or, or guided or directed towards doing anything specifically to kind of help you in that direction? Yeah, I, I think I've felt this for a long time. Um, when I was younger, I grew up in California and uh, we've been evacuated from wildland fires. We've had like every everything's burned up. Like not not my parents' home, mm -hmm. but like I've had a home I was staying in burn up, and all I had was my hiking backpack and a longboard. So to wow. me, I 
I remember looking through my city in Escondido and it just being completely evacuated. Uh, the skies are filled with smoke, ashes falling like snow, and there's an orange glow on every ridge and just feeling utterly mm -hmm. and completely alone spiritually because I was not in a good place. And also physically because I was literally there. So I just thought, who needs a vision when you're living it? It's th this is exactly how I felt. I felt like I was in hell and it took a matter of going heavenly father. I know this to be true. And if it's possible, I'm going to do it. And so it, it was a matter of lacking faith, following through on the belief. Mm -hmm. So today wow. I, I, I kind of, think, okay, there's going to be lots of natural disasters. Do we have the heart for it? Uh, am I raising my family to recognize right. this? So we we homeschool. We, we're trying to garden, things like that, and be self-sustainable. Also have the outlook of we can do hard things. Yeah. My, my seven-year-old and my four-year-old would probably not withstand the tests right now. <laughs> <laughs> very small things are, are very difficult for them. So how do you, how do you instill, um, you know, this, this mental toughness that's required for your children? Well, I feel like things always have to come through experience and that experience can be gained mm -hmm. through obedience or repentance for a positive change or yeah. for positivity. Right. So you either yeah. have to, correct something and, and and kids their prefrontal cortex is it's not quite there you know it's still developing they, mm -hmm. they need to understand the consequences right but more importantly i think they need to recognize where forgiveness comes from recognize forgiveness within the home but also mm -hmm. have the opportunities to bear testimony I, the, there's well, I, I won't get into that but think they need to hear us bear testimony and know where we go to for our own support and to have the time to pray for others and think of others as well that way if if we're right. always thinking selfishly inward we're going to be upset all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and i think that it, it's consistency too where it's just like every night are you taking a little time with your kids to say those prayers and read your scriptures, talk with them and having a little, just a little thought, a little chat about this kind of stuff. I think it goes a long ways. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about your, your physical preparations. I know you're, you're meeting with a group like a, a Baptist group or something and uh, kind of preparing your, your community in that way. What, what, tell, tell me a little bit about what you're doing there. Yeah. Well, it's like-minded individuals. We, we meet at the Baptist church because the pastor there is just very kind and allows us to do that. And mainly it's mm -hmm. about, I, I think like a, a large portion of the people are, I don't want to say doomsday preppers, but doomsday preppers. <laughs> but uh, I, I, Right. But there yeah. also there's common sense there. We think about community issues like are our farmers being, you know, swooped into selling off all their land for these acres of solar panels, which are they're they're not getting what they're being promised. And it's also negatively affecting the community. And it's it's mm -hmm. it's not without its harm and it's not without its damages to the soil and, and to everything. So if we're growing apples or orchards, peach orchards, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to affect the quality and the development of those things. But this is the way mm -hmm. uh, mayhem master mayhem likes to obtain power is monopolize and, and gain a, a upper hand on everything so that that's the only hand that you can take from. So what's what's the the goal of the community that you're setting up there? What what do you guys try to achieve? 
self-sustainability um, community. I think everyone there is trying to learn like, okay, if we lose power, do we have a way to still get water? How today we discussed, a, you know, mm. what pump, uh, what, what are our options for accessing well water? What are our access, our options for accessing well water on a commercial level for livestock and, and for, for a farm? And then how does this work within a community? But I, today we actually mm -hmm. had our judge come by and teach us a little bit of firearm, you know, laws and safety within the state of Idaho. So people aren't jumping. So how did you find this group or? Yeah, like how do how did you find each other or how did this group get started? Well, would you recommend other people doing the same? Well, recommend everybody being able to have that knowledge and be able to be aware of the circumstances around the world. The thing is, I feel like most people tend to be put off because it's not their taste of environment or they don't want to be considered a prepper or 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 be connected with people who maybe it's one political ideology sometimes they go oh no well if if it, if there's something important the church will look out for me they have tons of food they'll they'll just send me food if I, if something happens you know when we've been told repeatedly we we are like joseph we store up enough for ourselves but also to help others we're not to be dependent on the church. It's the the ten virgins, five wise, five not. It, back then, mm -hmm. the the bride, <clears throat> she would spend about a year preparing for the wedding, and it, they knew it was about a year away for that engagement. Her job was to go and prepare the bridesmaids, or at least tell them what to do to prepare. And the bridesmaids also helped her prepare, get the dress, get everything. But ultimately, when that day came, the bride would be picked up. And if you weren't ready, you weren't ready. And I think that it's still the same for us. We have to be prepared spiritually and physically. You know, maybe we die, maybe we don't. But if we're keeping our covenants, we're, we're good. <laughs> Right. Yeah. What What do you say to the members that say, like, live by the sword, die by the sword? He, he who takes up his sword will die by the sword kind of thing. Um, do you, I'm guessing you're, you're a pro-gun advocate. What would you say to the people who, who say things like that? Well, I mean, I'm a I'm pro people having their own ability to protect themselves. Um, but I don't go, you know, uh, talking about it or flashing around. It's, um, it's one of those deterrents that you hope you never, ever have to use. And we only have it because there's been a need for it in the past. Does it necessarily mean that you're going everywhere, guns up, you know, or, or, or we're going to, build a fort right. if, if all hell breaks loose uh, i think uh, i think it, it's the mentality if you want to shed blood you're probably going to if you don't want to the lord's gonna try and help you there yeah yeah but you should have you should be prepared to defend yourself even if you don't want to have to, I think. I yeah. think and most most of the reason is sometimes having... sorry. I, I was gonna say I think a lot of times people rely on the Lord to protect them, but sometimes that protection might come from a prompting saying, This is how you need what you need to do for your protection, and these are the steps you need to take. And if we want to say, Yeah, I know you you prompted me to to get i don't know you could get some maize bear spray a firearm a taser like different different things but if you say well i know i felt like i should have done those things but in the end i was expecting you to do this lord like i think 
it might not always work out that way. You know, I think sometimes the prompting is, is his answer to us and we need to do what we need to, to protect ourselves when that comes. Yeah. It's like the, the sister said in general conference about preparation of maybe she only needs one stone, but she's going to have five just in case. But can yeah. you imagine if, if our country didn't have firearms or the rights to have firearms, would we be where we are right now? I think just the ownership and the knowledge of the ownership itself is itself a deterrent from uh, a greater evil, nefarious power saying, okay, but th there, mm -hmm. when you take away the opportunity, that's a natural deterrent. The Lord sent Zion's camp with firearms. Did they have to fire them? No. Right. Yeah. And I ultimately on a more like a group as a, as a people, that's the solution. I think the, the saints will be victorious without firing a shot. In my opinion, that's my belief. But however, individually tomorrow, somebody could try to break into my home, you know? And so I think like on an individual basis, I think those things are necessary on like a, a I don't think we're going to form an army and do anything, you know, mm -hmm. Th that's me personally, who knows what the Lord has in mind for us, but um, that's kind of my own belief on that. I think. Um, yeah. I also, I think some people are saying like, well, I'd rather just die than have to defend myself and my family. I'll just, I'll just give up my life. I'd rather be in heaven anyway. And I think, that's kind of a, a coward's outlook. It's it's so much easier to die than to go through what I have in mind for us. <laughs> Dying would be a pleasure <laughs> in, in some cases, but to, to stay and fight and to protect your family, that that is what takes courage. And um, I think that's what we're being asked to do is to, to take courage and lead and protect our families. Yeah. The Lord said that all these afflictions would be for our good. And just imagine mm -hmm. what Christ has gone through. And yes, um, laying down your life, that's the easy way out. And if that was an option, you know, <laughs> but um, I think what the, the purpose of life is that we're to be refined through this. And this is where we find strength beyond our own. And it's because it's the Lord who supports us. And it's when we overcome those things, we truly become more like our Savior. Um, just because you're willing to go to fight in a war or, or fight a battle or defend something doesn't make you necessarily uh, more like God. And that's been happening among the wicked for generations. And Forever. what is it? Like? Yeah, right. Yeah. So I guess with all that, how how would you rate your fear level and your optimism level? Mine varies day to day. <laughs> tell you, yeah. I would say, for example, when COVID started happening, or uh, if you could, I think you could say when COVID started happening, um, I actually had some insight. I, I was substitute teaching. I had a student who was over in Anaheim, California, going to Disneyland, and I was reading an online news article, and it said it was October of 2019, and it said there's a flu-like virus um, from Chinese tourists on the rail system, and to have some caution. And I'm like, oh, hey, wow, I wonder how mm -hmm. he's doing. And that was a little bit of forward. I never knew what that would turn into. But once we started seeing right. everything shut down, I actually felt very comforted. And I was like, finally. <laughs> but and it was very selfish. <laughs> but I knew, okay. Yeah. Now, now we 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 had our food storage. We had toilet paper before <laughs> people were running out of it. Mm -hmm. And right. I thought, okay, we can do hard things. The Lord's gonna gonna sustain us. I mean, 
I don't believe that we're going to be raptured into heaven. If that happens, that would be amazing. But what have I done more significant than any of the other saints who suffered far worse? Not much. I I don't feel like I've mm-hmm. <laughs> earned uh, one wage crip to to the cloud when well, I. Well, yeah. Kind of... I mean. We know that we're going to be caught up into heaven at some point. It's just it's just like the rest of the Christians. Do we think it's going to be a pre-tribulation rapture or a post-tribulation rapture? And um, I think I think that's where the big difference is. I, I, I see us here and we're going to we're going to witness the destruction of the, the United States, the destruction of the U.S. dollar, the destruction of our societies and they'll be left desolate and um, we have to be prepared to see that and to go through that. And I, I, I I think I'm going to do a video maybe after this about ether chapter six, where it talks about the barges and they're going under the sea and the winds and the waves, but they're protected and they're praying the whole time. And the winds are blowing the whole time towards the promised land. And after 344 days, they come out and they're in the promised land. I think it's going to be kind of like that. It's probably yeah. not too different, actually. I mean, we do have to face some refiner's fire. Right. Yeah. It'll help us. It'll be good for us spiritually. Right it's good now. to have you on, Jonathan. No worries. I'll, I'll go ahead and cut the recording and we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah, definitely. I, I told my wife when I saw you, I'm kind of a fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the interview. And um, we'll just we'll have to check in, in in a couple of months and see how you're doing. OK. Yeah. Thank you. All right.